Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of India's World with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Unidentified armed men abducted seven Indians and one Afghan employee of an Indian infrastructure company in Afghanistan's Baglan province on Sunday. The incident happened in Bage Shamal, village of uh, the provincial capital Pul A Khomre. They were uh, abducted while travelling to the area where the company KEC owns an electricity substation contract. Baglan Provincial Council has linked the incident to the Taliban. No group has claimed responsibility for the abduction so far. Kidnappings are a serious problem in Afghanistan where large areas are wrecked by gangs or militant groups. In 2011, 12 Iranian and Afghan engineers were kidnapped while working on a road project in western Afghanistan. They were released after local tribal elders acted as mediators with Taliban insurgents. Last year, a Finnish woman working for a Swedish aid group was kidnapped from a Kabul guest house and released some months later. On this edition of India's World, we will discuss India's Taliban woes in Afghanistan. Joining me on the program today are Pinak Ranjan Chakravarti, Distinguished Fellow Observer Research Foundation and former Secretary MEA. Major General Retired Ashwini Sivach, defense expert and Professor A.K. Pasha Center for West Asian Studies, JNU. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of India's World. Ambassador, I'd like to begin with you. How safe, I mean, that's the, the basic question that you have to ask after what we saw on Sunday. How safe are Indians and Indian establishments in Afghanistan? Well, they are certainly not uh, safe to the extent of 100%. I mean, there are risks involved in working in Afghanistan for anybody and uh, these uh, frequent kidnappings are also have become a source of uh, generating revenue because many of them are usually freed on payment of ransom. So I think this has become a business for many of those areas which are virtually lawless or the Taliban which of course uh, local Taliban leaders also find it useful to raise money through this method. Mm. So that is there. So anybody working in uh, Afghanistan has to face a fairly high level of risk uh, uh, because uh, uh, of the bombings that are taking place or the indiscriminate uh, sort of killings by the Taliban. And the fact is that uh, I would say about half the country is not really uh, within, fully within the grip of the security forces of the government of Afghanistan. So, and Afghanistan has um, historically been known as a, as a kind of a free-for-all country in many ways and where pe everybody is armed, uh, villages are armed. Something like the Wild Wild West. It's a, it's the, it has been the Wild West for a long time. And, uh, so, and I think the, the usual process is to, is to extort money and I hope that will be the case in this also because sure. otherwise it can... I mean, uh, one can fear for their lives. Sure, we, we, we've seen what happened in Iraq, so that's something yes, that we don't want a repetition of that. But, uh, be, Pro mm. Professor, how serious a problem are abductions in Afghanistan? Well, as has been just pointed out, uh, it is a major challenge for the government, especially the security forces, because of the difficult terrain uh, in which some of these uh, kidnappings uh, occur. Uh, you know, the reach of the security forces uh, is not there throughout the length and breadth. Uh, uh, many remote villages, mountainous uh, areas uh, uh, are well known for the Taliban and uh, insurgents uh, there. But uh, I am uh, wondering whether uh, is there any link uh, with uh, what happened last week, the Prime Minister's meeting with the Chinese leader. Uh, this is a major thing and uh, Pakistanis are not obviously happy uh, with what is unfolding because uh, So are you suggesting impacts... that Pakistan's hand cannot be ruled out? Well, Pakistanis have tremendous influence over the Taliban. There is no doubt about it. No one doubts, not in the Americans, the Chinese or any of the uh, major powers involved there, whether it is Iran. But uh, it has come so soon. Why I am saying this is uh, sometime back the UAE uh, diplomats also were involved and killed and that was soon after uh, perceptible change in the UAE's uh, policy towards uh, Afghanistan. Earlier Iranians were the victims. So there is a pattern which can be linked whenever there is uh, a major development impacting the Taliban and Pakistan, they try to use them. Uh, sure. And send a message that uh, we are 
uh, uh, the powers that uh, have to be taken care of. And the Americans also have faced this kind of a situation. Many right. Americans also were uh, kidnapped and some of them uh, had to be released for huge ransom. Uh, Qatar has mediated many a time. So this is one angle. The second one is, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the country is uh, inching towards parliamentary elections in October. And uh, as you just pointed out, uh, the election commission in one of the cities was also uh, hit okay. and many people uh, in the mosque, uh, uh, which was also shared in the same complex. Although not so much, but the weapons which were left behind in the mosque, they exploded. Uh, that's how the multiple casualties uh, uh, occurred. So they want to send a message that uh, uh, their uh, uh, call, that they have called for boycott of the elections. Right. They have called for uh, uh, eviction of the American forces. So uh, they are sending very subtle message. Pakistan also is definitely behind this. Okay, sure. You know, that having been said, General, how do we safeguard our own interests in Afghanistan. What is the right step for us to go forward? See, there is no denying the fact that all these activities which are taking in Afghanistan, there is a hand of ISI and Pakistan. Remember that as far as Pakistan is concerned, they say normalcy may come to Afghanistan, but it should have two factors. One is that it should be Taliban which should govern it because they are maintaining relation with Taliban from last 25 years. They have not uh, strained relation in spite of pressure put in by the American. They have invested a lot in Taliban and Haqqani group. So they want that in case if, if normalcy, if the power has to be shifted, it should come to Taliban. And second thing they are saying that the India should not have any role hmm. because they feel Afghanistan is their strategic depth. And they feel that if India come there, then they are sandwiched between two powers. So therefore, this is what it is doing. Now, what has happened is that this is not one of one incident. It's a pre-planned incident. It is uh, with a mind of ISI and Haqqani group and these types of kidnap with sending a message that Indians are no more required. And this is why it has happened is that as today Modi has gone to Wuhan, the central China, and he along with Chinese uh, president were trying to say that let's cooperate in Afghanistan. Mm. Let us build up uh, Afghanistan. And I'm sure Pakistan doesn't like that. Pakistan does not want India to have any say. And India is now going in a very correct direction. India has become very popular. They are the one which has built the parliament. They have the one which have made road. They have made the hospital and school. Now this KEC company is the largest company. It is the one which is supplying the power in northern Afghanistan and uh, Bagram. And this is a basically, uh, you can say, a company which is a part of RPG group. They do not want that Indians should stay. They want sending a message that Indians are no more required. Because sure. they are feeling it. If Indians come, Indians are very popular. They did not allow us to go through Pakistan. We have now Charbar. We have bypassed Pakistan, going to Afghanistan, sent a lot of wheat there, almost 10 ships. Uh, consignment has been sent there and now we are going to central Asian state also through that. So that point is as on today ISI is very clear in mind that ki Indians should not be allowed to stay there okay. which Keep are popular and therefore this is not one of one incident this is a pre-planned incident which has got a footprint of ISI and Pakistan army. Okay that having been said ambassador difficult question if Pakistan well and truly is involved, like the previous panelists have suggested, what are our diplomatic options? Well, one is, of course, uh, the, the, the major option, of course, is to pursue, uh, first of all, the safe release of these people. And clearly that cannot be done uh, through the good offices of Pakistan, because they, if they are hand in glove with the kidnappers or with the Taliban or whoever, so I think uh, what we have done in the past is I think uh, the same route that we will take to talk to the Afghanistan government, to the governorate, to the governor, and because they have links with these people, the tribal elders and others, who can put pressure through various means. After all, they are these people must be having families in villages and others. So there are ways of you know persuasion, ways of even applying pressure. Uh, that can be done for the safe release. 
Now, whether that is done with payment of money or otherwise, because because many, many Afghanistanis, because they have no recourse to any employment, there is not much agriculture, uh, so either they take to opium cultivation or to these kind of kidnappings and uh, mercenary activities. In fact, there is a rumor going around that the ISIS is offering more money than the Taliban to many of these recruits. So hence, many of them are gravitating towards the ISIS. Now, uh, I mean, this is a rumor. I don't know. I don't have facts to evidence to back it up. But this is what uh, broadly a lot of people who watch Afghanistan are saying. Now, Pakistan, uh, whether Pakistan is involved in this is a moot point. And uh, it's, it's uh, tempting to speculate that because of uh, Prime Minister's visit uh, to Wuhan and the, and the agreement that China and, and, and India will work together in Pakistan, in this, Afghanistan. This, no, in sorry, Afghanistan. in Afghanistan, yeah. will will certainly not go down well with well the with Pakistanis. Pakistan. There's no question, mm. because you see what will happen is that even China is sending a message to Pakistan through this. Yeah. So whether it will happen or not, uh, and you may have read recently that there is this study in the UK which is being quoted widely that the Pakistan military has has um, extended an olive branch uh, no, is what they have, have done an internal kind of a thing and have come out come up with a with a doctrine or whatever that that peace with india is good for pakistan i mean you don't need a doctrine and a thesis for this i mean this is so obvious <laughs> it's as obvious as the nose on our faces that uh, it doesn't take a doctrine or research to do this but anyway i think that could be a signal for some change which um, in my personal view I doubt that there will be much changes, but these are all feelers to uh, which indicate that uh, that Pakistan is not comfortable. First of all, with this whole business of India uh, and China working together sure. in Afghanistan. Clearly, some feathers yeah. are ruffled and, there in yeah, Pakistan, and, and and these kidnappings may well be uh, a, a kind of a signal or an indication that of Pakistani unhappiness sure. and telling India to sort of lay off or something. Uh, right. But um, I don't know. I mean, uh, this is the first step. Let's see what happens. Sure. You know, that having been said, uh, uh, Professor Pasha, let's take the discussion forward. What's at stake for India in Afghanistan? Well, huge stakes. Uh, uh, you see, uh, from political, uh, strategic, uh, economic, uh, and of course, cultural, uh, civilizational links uh, we have had with uh, Afghanistan for centuries, uh, both positive and negative. But uh, the strategic uh, importance uh, is uppermost because uh, of a variety of reasons. We have seen uh, uh, the global jihadis who came to Afghanistan to evict the Soviet Union, you know, that spilled over into Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir we, during the late 80s and early 90s, that was a major issue. And, you know, it had global ramifications. We, through our diplomatic efforts, we were able to nip it in the bud. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, the, the political uh, situation there has been deteriorating over the last uh, couple of years, uh, which prompted the Afghan president to uh, offer talks and also in the shape of a political party for the Taliban to contest elections. Uh, uh, the more important point is uh, uh, the Americans who fought the Taliban or who are still fighting now have come around to suggesting talks. That is how uh, Abdul Ghani, the president, offered these talks and involvement. Uh, then the Russians, the Chinese, as we have discussed, uh, the, the Turks, the Iranians, uh, all have suggested uh, talks with the Taliban who cannot be dismissed, uh, who are major players in Afghan politics. Uh, you know, I uh, am thinking uh, that uh, India should also open a line of uh, contact, if not directly, at least through third party, uh, uh, like the Americans started in Qatar. Uh, you know, but that will be in a way giving them credence, uh, Professor. Not credence, but you know, the immediate uh, challenge is to get our uh, men released. Uh, you know, some opening has to be done eventually. You know, there is uh, nothing around the horizon which suggests that they will be wiped out. Like the Basque separatist or the IRA in uh, the 
15 20 years of fight the british had or in philippines or many other sure. insurgent uh, ridden area but this is a very unique uh, example where nato uh, has acknowledged that you know uh, they have not been able to contain them let alone defeat sure and uh, all powers now are in favor of talking precisely because there is no other alternative i mean the political dialogue uh, is the only option left uh, 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 to resolve the crisis so in that way somewhere uh, uh, we have sent a new ambassador to kabul uh, uh, maybe he he uh, would send ideas uh, whether it is through iran we can have an opening or uh, with ue we have good relations or in saudi arabia who is also uh, involved there so uh, either russia or any of the central asian powers who are key players in afghanistan we can make a beginning sure. eventually how it uh, pans out that remains to be seen because uh, some of these powers who are urging talks with taliban also feel that uh, you know moderate taliban should be contacted okay okay at least send out feelers for the time being is what you're suggesting you know uh, general how big a problem is the taliban in afghanistan for india taliban is a problem for india but india has to learn to stay with taliban remember that india has an interest in Tal in afghanistan afghanistan is gateway to central asian countries uh, central asian countries are the one which are rich in oil and energy we need those and we need afghanistan and we also know in afghanistan whatever you may do that whether it's a moderate taliban or taliban will come and therefore it is in our interest that we open a front with taliban to start with a backdoor diplomacy have contact with them and also put pressure on taliban through american to russian as on today russians have come very close to taliban to fight against is they have given lot of weapons to taliban so therefore there is no denying the fact the future of afghanistan is going tilting toward taliban whether it is a moderate or whether it is otherwise and taliban is the one which will be a major player in afghanistan you like it or not like it we made a mistake in past and that when we did not have uh, relation with taliban and that's how kandahar took place as on today we have to have a relation with taliban directly okay open the channel because afghanistan is too crucial a country for us we have invested lot in charbagh we wanted a central asian state to afghanistan and therefore it is required and therefore taliban is very important we should open front and we must now try to put pressure on taliban through russia through america through saudi arabia and try to get these seven uh, engineer which have been uh, basically abducted, abducted. Yeah. remember that as far as the afghanistan populace is concerned indians are the most popular there hmm. one has gone and seen them they are very popular because they are the one which have generally done development in afghanistan right and they are the generally the friend of afghanistan remember what happened is earlier the medical facilities most of the afghanis were going in pakistan now they are all coming in india because hmm. we are giving the 50 percent concession in airlines also and therefore most of the items are also sent from there whether it is basically granary or whether it is uh, basically textile so therefore india is maintaining very good relation with afghanistan present government of ashwar ghani but we know it future lies with taliban right. we must now open a front and we afghanistan is a too important state to be lose out okay the importance of afghanistan has been stressed by the general let's take the discussion forward quick closing comments from all my guests starting with you ambassador how important is it for us to have a peaceful afghanistan i think it's important for india to have a peaceful periphery why only afghanistan for our for us our primary goal is economic development so a peaceful periphery greater trade greater uh, sort of uh, economic activity is is uh, is essential for uh, or it's is a is a part of that uh, vision of having a peaceful periphery now coming back to afghanistan i think one of the problems that uh, that has faced the international community, particularly the NATO and ISAF mm -hmm. and the Americans, etc., is that they have been relying on Pakistan mm -hmm. to help them to solve Afghanistan right. without realizing that Pakistan is not interested in solving that. Only it will solve it at its own terms. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. the point is that, and Pakistan has not been punished for it. Right. Mr. Trump, the new American president, has tried to put some pressure. But their hands are also tried because of certain movements of men and material that take place via 
via Pakistan because <coughs> access into, into Afghanistan is a problem. Now, you could have had access through Iran, for example, or from the north, uh, from, uh, from, the, from, the, from Central Asian states, which they had. But then that gets into Modern. other kinds of problems with sure. the Russians. And Iran, I mean, obviously, Modern. you can't expect because if Mr. Trump is on the verge of walking out of the Iranian nuclear deal, you can hardly expect the Iranians Iran to cooperate. To indeed, indeed. And Chabahar itself is, of course, a place where India can cooperate. Sure. But I think uh, Sorry to cut it's, short, it's a huge mess. Yeah. Okay. Paucity of time. So, Professor, you know, uh, can India and China jointly bring about stability to the region? Yes, I think, I, think uh, so. this, I was about to emphasize this. Not only stability, but mm -hmm. before that, the immediate crisis of getting the Indians released China, I think... Uh, uh, can play an important role through its influence over Pakistan. Having said that, uh, uh, the stability uh, uh, is important because the Chinese are willing to invest in Afghanistan much more than what they had planned and also link up to the BRI projects in sure. Central Asia. So, our goodwill and the Chinese money can go a long way is what you are suggesting. Exactly. Okay, quick closing comment from you, General. You know, the ISIS seems to be spreading in Afghanistan as well. How big a problem is the Islamic State going to be for India and should we be, should we be weary of them? 100% IS, Islamic State is the worst enemy. Uh, that's why as on today, Russia is cooperating with Taliban to eliminate Islamic State. And therefore, Islamic State as on today is only in northern Afghanistan, only 5 to 10%, majority of Taliban. But if the Islamic State takes control in the northern part of Afghanistan and then from, from Pakistan it flows toward Kashmir, it can be dangerous for us. And therefore, the bigger enemy is Islamic State. And Islamic State is not friend of anyone. Sure. We can maintain good relationship with Taliban because Taliban can be manipulated in a political environment. But not the Islamic State, which, which is a basically a terrorist organization. Okay. It's a big threat. We should be alert and alive. Okay, all right. Be alert and alive as far as the Islamic State is concerned. The Taliban can be dealt with. We need to open the channel as far as the Taliban is concerned is what the general consensus here in our discussion is. With that, I'd like to thank all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. You can send your feedback and suggestions to us as well. Our email ID is indiasworld.feedback at gmail.com. You can also tweet to us using our Twitter handles at FRP09 and at Rajasabha TV. That's it from me. See you again next time.